Taiwan's National Palace Museum in Transition. Established in Taiwan, the National Palace Museum has been housing and protecting the treasures of human civilization for more than 50 years. We can safely say that the National Palace Museum belongs not only to this land of Taiwan, but also to the whole world. The entire collection of the Palace Museum spans close to 7,000 years of history and covers an enormous range, including Tibetan Buddhist ritual instruments, Japanese lacquerware, and even works of Western art. Among the exquisite works of art housed in the museum are some of the most representative of artistic and historic relics gathered from both royal and private collections. In pre-modern society, there was no museum specifically devoted to the housing and displaying of art relics and access to famous works of art required special privilege. With their close interactions to artists, private collectors at the time closely resembled modern collectors. These early collectors safeguarded cultural relics from loss and destruction. And by virtue of their close relationship with artists, collectors did much to inspire new artistic creations. Collectors also ingeniously inscribed writings and their personal seal to mark ownership of artworks, making the calligraphy and paintings in the National Palace Museum collection truly special. Aside from private collections, emperors also served as the most powerful supporters and patrons of artistic creations. The range and scope of the imperial art collection was augmented by the personal taste of the emperor. This scroll painting, Early Snow on the River, was composed by Zhao Gan, a student of the 10th century painting academy of the Southern Tang Dynasty. Surviving the tribulations of over 1,000 years, the painting passed from the imperial palace collections of the Southern Tang, Song, Yuan, Ming, and Qing dynasties to its present home at the National Palace Museum. The scroll's lively brushwork depicts fishermen and travelers set against the misty water and snowflaked landscape south of the Yangtze River. With the passing of winter comes the spring, and the broad canvas of scenery scroll from the Song Dynasty reflects the majesty and grandeur of the Song Epoch. Guo Xi's early spring describes the early thaw of the spring. Fan Quan's Travelers Among Mountains and Streams depicts a traveling caravan at the foot of a majestic mountain. Li Tang's Whispering Wind Among the Pines on the Mountain conjures up images of a robust stream. The minute brushstrokes, executed with obvious reverence, still move viewers after more than a thousand years.
In addition to emperors, mainstream artists and scholars also served as important innovators who set artistic trends. By incorporating poetry with painting to the creative process, artists brought to their works the sentiments and aesthetic beauty of literature. The literati Sudompo, who thrived during the Song Dynasty, serves as a perfect example of literature blended with art. Su was both a famous author and artist. He left behind countless works that have become classics from his years in exile. Su's Ode to the Red Cliff was composed while he was demoted and exiled to Huangzhou. While rowing to the Red Cliff with his friends, Su experienced an epiphany about life, which can be summed up with Zhuangzi's dictum, the universe and I are one. This Taoist philosophy brought him many admirers and inspired many artists through the centuries. The National Palace Museum collection contains many works of art that were inspired by Su's Ode to the Red Cliff. Su's political failure and exile to Huangzhou gave him an opportunity to cope with the reality and inescapable difficulties of human life. Destitute, Su wrote the scroll poem, Cold Food Observance. The text's cadence moves from slow to fast, with sudden climaxes and stops, perfectly expressing an artist's struggle with the mundane hardships of life. By the same token, the poem set lofty standards for artists throughout the ages.